Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and I'm a senior character artist. In this quick tips and tricks tutorial, we're going to take a look at objects in 3D Studio Max, creating them, manipulating them, changing colors, doing, doing a number of different things. Okay, so this is the 3D Studio Max interface. This is the default look. Of course, yours might be a little bit different depending on how you've saved your viewports. Right off the bat, we have front, top, left, and our perspective view. At any point, you can always just grab the little uh, gizmo and spin it around as you need to. You can do that in any of these other views. I'm not going to because you pretty well got the idea. Okay, but to create something in 3D Studio Max, it's very simple. Just click this button here. If you if you hold your mouse cursor over this particular any of these tabs, it'll actually tell you what it is. This is Create, Modify, Hierarchy, Motion, Display, and Utilities. We're just going to look at Create right now. So you're just going to click on the Create tab. Right off the bat, we're given a panel. We have creating a box, sphere, cylinder, torus, teapot, cone, geosphere, tube, pyramid, and plane. They give you a number of basic shapes that often, especially when you're making mechanicals, they come in really handy to just work these from, especially like tube or something like that. There are, if, if you've got an arrow here, you, you know you can click then and see all the different ones you can actually go to. You can actually do extended primitives, which are chamfer boxes, capsules, things like that, a ring wave. You can go down to a compound object. That's where you get to merge things and create booleans. There's particle systems, patch grids. We're not going to get into that for this. This is just a quickie. Again, a whole, a whole series of different things. So... Uh, pr pretty easy, but like I said, we'll just start with the standard primitives at this point. Let's just say we're going to start with the sphere. I'm going to click the sphere. Right off the bat, we can change the number of segments. This number of divisions it's going to be in both the X and Y. Uh, we'll leave it at 32 just for now. And we're going to go ahead and just left click and drag in our viewport. Okay. I can now rotate around the model by just clicking the gizmo and looking around. I can hit F4 to see the different wireframes on this. And by the way, this is just a regular default color. Uh, every time you create a new object, 3D Studio Max will give just you know some color on there. To change that really easily, you just have to click on the color box and you can change to any one of these colors very simply. Just clicking it, hitting OK. You can in fact click on it and you can create custom colors by clicking on the add custom colors you can change it to any variation any any slight shade you don't have you can set yes okay and then you can go ahead and click okay and there's your custom color okay it's pretty simple we've created this this sphere but we haven't made it uh, an object yet a deformable object we could create a few things that could like space warps that could could uh, warp the object itself, but we can't manipulate the vertices or the edges or any of the polygons right now because we've only created it so far. We haven't actually created it as an edible mesh or an edible polygon at this point. As such, it means we can change this right here, the segments, on the fly. I can grab either one of these arrow keys and move it up or move it down. As you can see, I can scale it up so we can go to 41. Or I can scale it right on down, scale it, keep scaling it down to say 10. There you go. I can change the radius on the fly. Okay. I can also adjust the hemisphere. I can make, I, especially with the sphere, maybe if you want to do half a dome, you know, like doing a sky dome. This is a very simple way to do it. You can actually type in 50 if you want, just to make it 100% perfect, or just 0.5. And there's your hemisphere, okay? Obviously, if you don't want that, just drop it down, back down to zero and you're fine. Let's assume this is what you wanted to create. All right, now that we've got this created, there's a couple different ways you can convert this to an edible mesh or an edible poly. One of them is a shortcut key. Now, I have a particular shortcut key on mine. It's the period. If I hit period, it's now converted this to an edible poly. As you can see right here in the, the modifier stack, it says edible poly. If I can control, control Z that really quickly, I can also right click on the object. It's right down here is convert to, 
and it says editable mesh, and unfortunately it runs off the screen, but it also says editable poly, et cetera, et cetera. So if I want to do it for an editable mesh or an editable poly, I can do it whatever. In this case, let's just do editable mesh so you can see it. Okay, so it's now converted to an editable mesh. There is a difference between editable mesh and editable poly in that there are a lot more a lot more functionalities to using a uh, your your mesh as a edible poly than there is edible mesh. Probably get into that in another series, but we're just looking at creating these objects at this point. All right. So now it's an edible mesh. Again, I can always just convert to an edible poly by using my particular shortcut, and it didn't didn't change anything. But we're now an edible poly, so we can do a lot more with it. As you can see, we have the gizmo. Uh, we can go ahead and do a quick rotate around. For me to toggle this full screen, my shortcut is W. So I can now look at this full screen and I can rotate by using a shortcut key of my own. For me it's uh, V, but you can also just click it via this. All right. This is our, our transform gizmo where you can move the model in the Z, in the Y, or back that way in the X. Okay. Also, I don't know if you can see it, but there's these see these little panels in between each one of these? Between the Y and the Z, there's this panel right here. Between the X and the, the Z, there's this panel. And between the Y and the X, there's this panel down here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. But I can click into that as well, and I can actually move around in the X and the Y at the same time. Or I can click on this panel, and I can move it in the X and Y at the same, uh, the X and Z at the same time. Okay, so as long as you're just grabbing the manipulator handles, you you're you're assured you're only moving in one direction. All right. Anytime you want to grab one of these panels, you are then moving in whatever that that particular orientation is right off the bat. Okay, it's just one of those things to kind of keep in mind. To turn off and on our manipulator uh, gizmo, it's just X. If you turn on X, it turns it on, turns it off. Okay. I just did a quick shift and I grabbed on the um, Z manipulator handle and that created a copy. I can create a copy, an instance, or a reference. Okay. Yes, that just that quick. All I have to do is grab, grab one of these handles, hit, hold down your shift. Oh, I'm sorry, hit shift and then hold down the handle. You have to do one before the other slightly. So you hold down your shift and then just grab a handle, and you have a copy. In this case, let's go ahead and just create it as an instance. All right, and I'm going to hit one on my keyboard to get into my vertices, and I'll go ahead and pull this out. So you can see what I do with one is being done to the other. Simple, easy, great way to make duplicates. All sorts of things you can do with that. Okay. If you want to get out of subobject, a really quick, easy thing to do is just click. Right now I'm in vertices. That's what you're seeing here. If I go to two, that's edges. If I go to three, that's the border, like an open border. Four is a polygon, and five is the object itself. Okay. But you can always just click on that, and then you're out. And again, let's go ahead and just delete this this duplicate. We really don't need it. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it around. All right. Let's go ahead and get into our vertices again. I'm just going to grab these top vertices. If you ever need to delete vertices, unlike uh, Maya, you can actually just delete. Just click it, delete. Click, delete. Or if you want to do it as on a face, again, you can just do the four key and hit delete. I know with Maya, you actually have to delete the faces as, as opposed to the vertices. In Max, you don't. You can actually just grab a vertice you don't like and hit delete. It's very simple, very quick. All right. All right, so that's the quick way to do to a quick creation. Again, this is the, the tab for creating it. You can do boxes, spheres, cylinders. Oh, by the way, let's do a quick one where I will actually, what you can do when you're creating 
is if you uh, select this uh, snap toggle right here, the snap toggles, if you right click on it, this is the grid and snap settings. This is where you can snap to vertices, snap to pivots, grid points, etc. In this case, uh, we, we can snap to our grid lines, or let's go ahead and snap to grid points. If we now create, let's go ahead and, and create a sphere or a box, you notice that? Check that out. I now get it where it's saying, okay, from what, what, what grid point to what grid point? So we can do snap from one to the other and then up. At any point, by the way, you can, inst I was in the top view, but you can instantly rotate at any point. You don't have to turn around and uh, switch panels uh, like in a couple other programs. Uh, you can you can switch it out instantly, no problemo. I can go back into moving, but this time it wants to move based on grid points, so I'll have to just snap it over. You can see that? You see how it snaps? It snaps over. Okay. You can actually adjust whether it's grid points, whether it's a particular grid line. Uh, you can actually do it via edges and faces when you when you've got multiple models and you're blending or, or moving models. Uh, just make sure you're checking the grids and snap settings. That's uh, right clicking on this snap toggle will bring that up. Also, with the options, if you click the options, oftentimes you'll you'll get this use axis constraints. If you don't have that checked, sometimes you can just go and you can move and do whatever. Other times it says use, when you click use axis, axis constraints and you try to move it, it now wants to snap into one axis constraint or another. Okay, so you want to be aware of that. That's one I actually use a lot of on and off, on and off. I do that a lot with, with my modeling when I'm working with it. Also, uh, one of the things I like to use, this is your, your basic menu. One of the things that they don't show a lot is the actual axis constraint. And what I'll do is I'll just right click in this command panel. It's empty. And I'm going to go to axis constraints. This is our axis constraints. We can actually move items based on the X, Y, Z, or X, Y. You see how they just lit up differently too? See the Z, there's the X all of a sudden light up, or the Y, I'm sorry, and then the X. And then you just, to dock it, you can just click and drag it up, and then it creates a new line for you to dock. You can actually dock multiple palettes that way for different controls for different things as you need it. And then that way, if I turn off my um, gizmo, and I can lock my selection by just hitting the space bar, as you can see the little lock turns on, I can now just go ahead and move, and you'll notice I'm not even on the model, but I've locked my X constraint so I can move it backwards and forwards. If I do it on the Y, backwards and forwards, okay? Real simple, real easy. Anyway, I hope you had fun with this. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com. Thanks for watching.